Did you know that hibiscus tea can lower your systolic blood pressure by up to seven points? That's similar to what some prescription medications can achieve. And it's just one of the natural approaches we're going to cover today. Welcome back, everyone. Dr. Sean Hashmi here, board-certified nephrologist and obesity medicine specialist. Today, we're exploring the most effective evidence-based foods and supplements for lowering blood pressure. They're going to be ranked by how many points they can actually drop your numbers. Whether you're trying to avoid medications or enhance your current treatment, these eight science-backed approaches can make a significant difference. You're going to see specific dosages, who benefits the most, important safety considerations for each approach. All right, let's dive into the science. No hype just practical strategies you can implement today. Before jumping into the supplements, let's establish the foundation. Comprehensive dietary patterns often provide the strongest blood pressure benefits. We've all heard of the DASH diet recommended by the American College of Cardiology, American Heart Association. This approach can reduce blood pressure by about 11 points and diastolic by about three points in hypertensive individuals. This makes it one of the most powerful non-medication approaches available. And what's the DASH diet? Well, it emphasizes very same things we keep talking about. Fruits and vegetables, whole grains, low-fat dairy, limited sodium, and foods that are rich in potassium, magnesium, and calcium. There's a Mediterranean diet, which is not as powerful as DASH, but it can reduce systolic pressure by about one and a half points or so, and diastolic by about one and a half points. It also features high consumptions of fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, nuts, olive oil, and moderate amounts of fish. And of course, the Mediterranean diet has additional cardiovascular benefits, protect you against a heart attack, stroke, and improve your cholesterol. Now remember, individual supplements, they work best when you incorporate them into a health, healthy, hard eating pattern, like the ones we just mentioned. And so at the bottom line of all these dietary patterns, it's just a whole food predominant diet. So let's dive into the first item that can help your blood pressure, and that's potassium-rich foods. Now, potassium is one of the single most effective nutrients when it comes to blood pressure. According to the American Heart Association, increasing potassium intake can lower systolic blood pressure by about four and a half points and diastolic by about two and a half points in people suffering from high blood pressure. How much should you get? Well, the target is 4.7 or 4,700 milligrams daily. So 4.7 grams or 4,700 milligrams daily. So if you're thinking about, well, how the heck do I get so much potassium? It's very simple. If you look at one avocado, one medium avocado is about 975 milligrams. One cup cooked spinach is about 839 milligrams. Beans. A cup of cooked beans, 600 to 800 milligrams. One sweet potato, 541 milligrams. One banana is about 400 milligrams. And one orange is about 230 milligrams. Now, who benefits the most? Well, interesting fact. There are four groups that actually see the strongest benefit with potassium intake. One, people who already have high blood pressure. Two, those who have a high salt or sodium intake because potassium helps to counterbalance sodium. Three, African-American individuals. And four, women, especially women with high sodium intake. Now, while potassium benefits most people, those with chronic kidney disease, stages three and four, diabetes, severe heart failure, adrenal insufficiency, or taking certain medications need to be cautious. Now, also, there are medications that require monitoring, such as ACE inhibitors, angiotensin receptor blockers, or ARBs. ACE inhibitors are names like lisinopril. ARBs, or angiotensin receptor blockers, are names like losartan. There are potassium-sparing diuretics like triamtrine, amylaride, and of course, there's NSAIDs like Motrin ibuprofen. Now, always consult your healthcare provider if you have any of these conditions, such as chronic kidney disease, heart failure, diabetes, etc., or if you're taking any of the above medications. All right, let's dive into beetroot juice and nitrate supplements. Beetroot juice works through a fascinating mechanism. It's rich in dietary nitrates that convert to nitric oxide in your body, 
relaxing the blood vessels. Multiple studies showed that beetroot juice can lower systolic blood pressure by about four to four and a half points and diastolic anywhere between one and a half to four points. In one study, measuring 24-hour blood pressure, the gold standard, patients saw reductions of eight points in their systolic and four points in their diastolic blood pressure. Now, if you think about those numbers, that's comparable to prescription medications. Effective dose, well, the research supports about 250 to 500 mils of beet juice daily. Now, this is about 400 to 800 milligrams of nitrates. What are the side effects you should know about? Well, generally, beetroot juice is harmless, but it should be noted that some people can get beeturia, which is just red or pink urine. It is harmless. There can be red stools. Once again, that's harmless. This is not blood. There can be headaches in some people, and sometimes some people can have a little bit of dizziness. Now, if you dislike the taste of beetroot juice, there are concentrated beetroot supplements that are available. Just make sure that you get it from a reputable brand so that they can contain standardized amounts of nitrates. All right, let's talk about hibiscus tea. This vibrant red tea isn't just delicious. It's actually a powerful tool for blood pressure management. Multiple systematic reviews have found that hibiscus tea can lower blood pressure systolic by anywhere between four and a half to seven points and diastolic between four to four and a half points. The most studied protocol is three 240 ml servings of brewed hibiscus tea daily. Alternative, 10 grams of dried hibiscus brewed daily. Now, for me, I take hibiscus tea daily. I just like the fact that I like drinking it. I like how it makes me feel. So it's been part of my routine for quite a long time. I don't take it for blood pressure. But in terms of blood pressure, hibiscus tea has multiple mechanisms, including it's got a diuretic effect. So you will feel that you'll pee more after taking it. It also has ACE inhibition, similar to ACE inhibitors like lisinopril that we've talked about. And it also causes vasodilation. Now, in terms of the safety profile, it's actually very well tolerated and has very minimal side effects. Now, some people may have a little bit of digestive discomfort. In terms of blood pressure, you just want to be mindful because it can lower your blood pressure very powerfully. So just be careful of any dizziness. But keep in mind, hibiscus tea is one of the safest and most pleasant approaches on the list that we're talking about. Next, let's talk about aged garlic extract. This is a specialized form of garlic that's been aged for as much as 20 months. And by aging garlic, you actually enhance its beneficial compounds. The research on aged garlic extract shows there was a meta-analysis that showed that it lowers systolic blood pressure by about four points. There was one study, and this wasn't replicated, but it showed that systolic blood pressure went down by an impressive almost 12 points over 12 weeks. Now, what's the recommended dosage? Well, you want to get about 1,200 milligrams per day for optimal effects. And, you know, some benefits are seen even at half the doses or around 480 milligrams per day. It is important to distinguish this one versus regular garlic supplements because aged garlic supplements what they do is the aging process creates unique compounds that enhance stability and bioavailability. In terms of side effects, it's very well tolerated. Some people can have some stomach upset. There's less garlic odor than raw garlic, but some people may still notice it. Now, here's the thing. If you've tried garlic before or hibiscus tea, drop a comment. Let me know. What was your experience like? Did you notice a reduction in blood pressure or not? All right, let's dive into omega-3s. Omega-3 fatty acids, particularly EPA and DHA found in fish oil, algae, and so forth, they also lower blood pressure. There's a meta-analysis that showed that omega-3s can reduce systolic blood pressure by about four to four and a half points and diastolic blood pressure by about two and a half to three points. What's the optimal dosage? Well, the sweet spot for blood pressure is between two to three grams per day of EPA and DHA combined. Just make sure it's a reputable source. And keep in mind, this is much higher than what you could possibly consume from diet alone. Now, 
side effects. At therapeutic doses, two to three grams per day, you will see there's more fishy aftertaste. It could be heartburn. There's also increased uh, bleeding risk. And this is very important if you're on any blood thinners. And some people also report stomach upset. Now, what are food sources? Well, supplements are usually needed because of the high dose you need for blood pressure. But food sources are fatty fish like salmon, mackerel, sardines, and of course, there's algae or algae oil. Next up, let's talk about magnesium. Magnesium is an essential mineral that many Americans don't get enough of, and it plays a key role in blood pressure regulation. Meta-analysis showed that you can reduce systolic or top number by about two points and diastolic by almost two points. In hypertensive individuals, you can see that this is much better in terms of the effect. So you get about four point reduction in the systolic blood pressure and about two and a half points or so reduction in the diastolic number. Now, the most effective forms, and this is important, are magnesium oxide, about 300 milligrams a day, magnesium citrate, around 368 milligrams per day, and magnesium chloride, the range is 240 to 600 milligrams per day. What's interesting about magnesium is the most popular forms Magnesium glycinate, which I take in the evening, and magnesium threonate, which I take in the morning, these actually don't have any evidence for blood pressure. Now, they have all sorts of effects. For me, it's sleep, it's cognitive benefits, and that's why I take it. It has nothing to do with blood pressure. But note that in terms of blood pressure, glycinate and threonate will not help. What are the most common side effects with magnesium? Well, Diarrhea is the most common, especially with magnesium oxide, nausea, and abdominal discomfort. Now, if you prefer to get nutrients from food rather than supplements, you want to focus on magnesium-rich foods like spinach, which has about 157 milligrams in one cooked cup. Pumpkin seeds, an ounce, is about 156 milligrams. Black beans, notice beans comes up over and over again, but black beans, one cup, 120 milligrams. Quinoa, one cup cooked, 118 milligrams. Almonds, just an ounce, 80 milligrams. Mackerel, 82 milligrams in three ounces. And keep in mind that these foods align perfectly with a whole food plant predominant diet, which is the basis of DASH and Mediterranean diets that we discussed earlier. When you're thinking about magnesium, try to aim for a variety of these foods so you can get the recommended amount, which is about 320 to 420 milligrams of magnesium. All right, let's rank all of these evidence-based approaches by their potential blood pressure impact. Most effective approaches based on evidence, DASH diet, up to 11 points. Beetroot juice, four to four and a half points. Hibiscus tea, four and a half to about seven points. Aged garlic extract, four all the way up to 12 points reduction in blood pressure, omega-3 fatty acids, four to four and a half points reduction in blood pressure. Potassium-rich foods, about four and a half points reduction. Magnesium supplements, anywhere between two to about four points reduction in blood pressure, and the Mediterranean diet coming all the way last at about one and a half points reduction in blood pressure. So, what's my three-step recommendation? First, Focus on a whole food, predominant plant-based diet. Doesn't mean you have to restrict yourself. It still means you can have other foods, but the basis is a whole food diet. Number two, add on specific foods like potassium-rich foods or magnesium-rich foods daily. Remember with potassium, if you have advanced kidney disease, you need to be very careful. Check with your doctor. And number three is if you're going to take supplements, that would be the third level to add on if needed. After you've done the diet, you've added specific potassium and magnesium rich foods. And remember, always talk to your healthcare provider before starting any supplements, especially if you have kidney disease or on any blood pressure medications or have any other conditions. So what is your experience? What kind of approaches have you done for your high blood pressure? I would love to know in the comments below. And if you found this information helpful, please give this video a thumbs up, share it with someone who might benefit. Remember, practice kindness, and I'll see you in the next video. Our goal 
has always been the same, is to help you to have better health through better science, one evidence-based step at a time. Thanks so much for watching.